Lector uh, International Media, Jan Buiting uh, reporting from Electronica 2014 show. Extremely crowded, extremely busy, extremely noisy. We have to speak up to be heard. We can even hear ourselves. It's a bit of a problem. Um, we are at a very, very special location and in a minute we'll uh, find out why that is. We have a ton of measurement and test equipment uh, right in, in, in the back of us. And um, let's see what uh, is happening. This is um, my guest, um, or I am the guest, by uh, welcome by uh, by Kai, Kai Sharma. Yes. Kai, um, you are going to tell us a bit about Hamek, Hamek test equipment, and test equipment that means like oscilloscopes, single generators, power supplies. Can you tell us the basic range of the equipment? What? the basic functions are. Absolutely, I mean one of the key products that people know us, especially in Europe, when, they, when we talk about HAMEC is oscilloscopes. Yeah. We are also quite big in actually in power supply units. Power supply units make a significant amount of, of uh, revenue of our company. Is that recent addition uh, the power supplies HAMEC or, or from the power? No, no, this is, this is actually, it, it, the oscilloscopes were the visible parts but there it was like the dark horse, the silent second tier if you want it like that that just started to grow and grow and grow but it actually started about 10 15 years ago that we became very strong in this business because if i remember from my youth and my days hamek was immediately like associated with oscilloscopes and they were very famous and everybody knew the brand so i was you know the the power supplies as you say have been dormant but now they are back they are back yes supplies are back oscilloscopes still play a very very important role and you can really see that now our oscilloscopes are now being relabeled to be named Rode and Schwarz yep. all uh, this is the first time here at the Electronica trade show where we are showing all our oscilloscopes in the new library in the new Rode and Schwarz library and especially when you look at this range you can see our introductory or entry level scope version you can see that next to all the oscilloscopes from Rode and Schwarz and you can really see that we do not, we, we blend into each other, we complement each other. So the equipment is labeled Rode and Schwarz but it is still Hamek. Can you tell us a bit more how that is interwoven? Yes. How does that work for the audience? Yes. Well at the end of the day uh, Hamek has been uh, bought by Rode and Schwarz in 2005 already and it was there were a couple of years when it was a quiet time when Hamek and Rode and Schwarz happily worked next to each other not really interfering or not, interfering is a bad word but basically not uh, negotiating too much about the product strategy or anything like that they were like two separate companies okay. this changed in about 2010 in 2010, the production of Hamek was moved into the production system of Rode and Schwarz. Meaning, uh, they were integrated into the production, existing production lines, quality production lines of Rode and Schwarz. But still, so it basically means since 2011, you buy a Hamek scope, but it has already been made by Rode and Schwarz. It's a product from a Rode and Schwarz factory within Europe. It's a European product. We're the only bench top test and measurement company nowadays yeah. in this price range that builds the products in Europe. So that's I think very very important to mention because... Talk, talking about building uh, Kai, we, we have a couple of uh, instruments from Hamek at our booth, at Elector's uh, soldering booth here at the show and people have been amazed by the quality of the display. Yes. It is, yes, you can see that quite clearly, possibly even on the... I hope this is on camera, gets well on camera, Patrick, yes. yeah. With a, it might be difficult with the lamp, but I mean, this is one of the typical things of what we do. Even our entry-level scope has an industrial-grade TFT display. It is not some consumer product which is cheap, but it is still, we still have the... We, we still want to produce professional equipment, even though in this case it really is at a price that even enthusiasts can buy it for their workbench at home. Can you mention a price range, uh, Kai? The price range, this one starts at 800 euros. So you have a scope with a pattern generator, a little function generator, voltmeter and... Uh, Let's build in all these sub-instruments. Yes, yeah, we have all these sub-instruments in there already. So you have a voltmeter integrated into it. This has a fantastic uh, FFT functionality. It is super fast. It is displaying a kind of spectral... It does at the moment, yes. Um, but basically the idea was as well, because of the, the processor, the controller in there, this controller was that is in, built in there, 
two or three years ago it was used in tablet computers. Wow. So this is a really speedy wow. thing and uh, you can really see that especially when you do use functions like the FFT comes with a fantastic display which is still important so we still want to we want to produce we don't want to be the cheapest one we want to create we want to offer the best bang for the buck and what about the, the ergonomics of the, the, the controls the general look and feel of the instruments well this has now obviously been changed a little bit with being it labeled Rode and Schwarz you can see we we we, we try to make it similar to the color schemes of the Rode of, of Rode and Schwarz the whole labeling has changed little things at the end of the day for example if you look at the amount of information that is that is now on uh, the the front panel yeah. we have actually stripped it down that, that is correct. I was struggling a bit with your, one of your instruments yesterday and I was pleased to see that there was not so much information on the display. Is that a trend you are following? Is that, a, is that it's done, on, it's done on purpose, isn't it? Yes, it is done on purpose because at, well, at the end of the day we get a lot of customer feedback for our products and so not surprisingly we are very, we, we're very, we're listening very carefully to what our customers say and if our customers say wouldn't it make sense to have this optimized in a way then we try to accommodate that because at the end of the day the customer customer is the one who defines the product, is the one who buys the product. Okay. Let's so. look at like, some other instruments, uh, Kai. Yes. They are, all have the same look and feel and, yes. and uh, the, the cases. What, what, what do we have here? Well, this one is a uh, digital multimeter because Hamek also produces digital multimeters, controllable by Skippy commands, uh, LXI compliant, so everything you need for an industrial grade um, digital multimeter. Again, all the products that we create or that we are building are aimed for the professional market. Yeah. Are you following uh, the industrial grade rates set by Rode and Schwarz roughly? Or yes, as well, because Rode and Schwarz is also, they are also using our instruments to integrate them into systems, okay. which means you automatically exist complex systems for customers, yes. they integrate this, your yes. instruments. Yes. Brilliant. Power, yeah. supplies, pl power supplies especially they go into systems from Rode and Schwarz. And you simply have industrial requirements. So like every customer who can email to us and say, we would like to have this and that and that, Rode and Schwarz as well is a customer of us, of our division, yeah. and they have their requirements and they want to see them fulfilled. And obviously um, we are trying to fulfill them because industrial customers are a vital part of our business. So I'm, I could imagine this uh, supply or this voltmeter being integrated in a large industrial rack um, and being used in the industry. Yes, like especially in, in ATE environments. Um, yeah. I mean, this is a half 19 inch device now, which means you have three channels, power supply channels, three channels, make it times two and you have a full 19 inch rack. So you have one 19 inch rack width and uh, you have six channels, six power supply channels. Now imagine you can stack that up, imagine how many power supply channels you can integrate into a 19-inch rack. And this is all so, remote controllable. So that opens up the market for industrial customers as well, from, from your end? Yes, but also even the predecessor of it has been remote controllable. We have just put more strength on it by, for example, adding um, LAN, LXI um, compatibility, all these kind of little things they were tweaked. One of the small things that you don't see from the front, unfortunately, it's <laughs> going to be very difficult to take it out. Okay, well, but um, all we the... Technicians guy, yeah? <laughs> we should be able <laughs> yeah. to do it. Um, hang on, we take this one. Yeah. Kai is uh, actually removing equipment from a sack and um, moving it over here so we can, so we can have a look at it. One of the, one of the cool yeah. things on the back side, and this is really where you can see this is... Cool things on the back. Made, this is made for industrial. Is, um, this is the, all the connectors for, from the front are there in the back. It means all connectors, including sense lines, mm -hmm. because of course this power supply has sense lines. And this is a standard uh, a standard socket, a standard plug, mm -hmm. which means you have the other one hooked up to your cabling. Yep. And if you have your calibration intervals of 12 months, which they're usually 12 months, all you have to do, if it's built in in a rack, unplug it, take it out. Imagine you have to do all this with screws. That so, would be a nightmare. Yes, so we are really trying to think for the customer as well. But again, this is something that was kind of like brought to us by the customer who said it's a pain in the neck if we have to screw it change it so the next model had it changed do you get a lot of feedback from customers and and what what what's the technical depth of that feedback is that just complaints general or do they come with suggestions and where do they come from they they come from really all over the world um, which is important for us because different <laughs> different uh, parts of the world have different requirements 
Um, we have a, we have, we're in the lucky situation that our customer support is very closely associated with the product management. All our customer supporters are engineers. engineers that, is a, that is a good voice on the telephone to have to talk to an engineer you know, straight away. You know, exactly. You know who to talk to and they understand what you want, they understand what you need. And um, that, so we, we do this deliberately as well because it allows us to better understand what the customer requirements are. That's a short connection between engineers from engineers. Yes. Yeah. And then we have an R&D situation. We seriously have that. If there is a very tricky customer question, we can literally grab our coffee, walk about 10 meters, and talk to the head engineer of that product. Do you have a kind of technical uh, broadcast to engineers? From look, look what's happening to our equipment. Are there updates? Do you, do you, how do you reach out? How does Hamek reach out to their customers? To the customers. Well, one of the things, of course, is we update firmware or new manuals or whatever. We update that on our website. If there are important things, then you can also subscribe to us. If you want nowadays, you subscribe to yeah. a company. Yeah. So you can subscribe to us on Twitter or Facebook or wherever. And important uh, updates we will also put on our blog, which is linked to uh, Twitter and Facebook. Um, so we reach our customers very quickly. And we can see that it works because we get immediate feedback. Yeah. So people try a firmware and see, oh, this is now better. Or, oh, you have done something okay. weird now. It's different. Uh, immediate response and very technical response. I think the, the, the engineers really like that and appreciate that we today. Have, we have one wonderful thing. Uh, we have a lot of customers who are ham radio experts. I am a ham radio. So a lot of the people who know Hamek are associated with ham radio. And ham radio enthusiasts, they have a very strong brand loyalty and it's all, they almost take it personal if you build a product that doesn't meet their expectations. They make this very clear to you, but on a very constructive technical way, which is a joy for us because all we need to do is listen and do it. Okay, Kai, now I'm going to do a special request to you. Could you hold this microphone like for a second? Of okay, course. because I may have a slight problem for you to solve. Oh, oh, okay, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> what have you there? <laughs> Talking about engineers bringing in problems. We had a bit of a problem with this uh, 1964 Roden Schwarz signal generator, one of the knobs. Does it not? It's, it still works, but not, not too well. Okay. So I was asking your advice. What would be your advice, uh, Kai? Well, do I repair this or do I replace this with one of your instruments? To be honest, nowadays, with the requirements that you have nowadays, I would actually replace it. If it would work, I would be nerdy enough to keep it in my museum and shall, I would treasure it. Shall we give it a try and connect it to one of We can try and connect it and How see what that? happens. We because can absolutely it try that. Work. We have actually managed to switch on our 1964 uh, Rode and Schwarz uh, test instrument, which had a bit of a mechanical problem, but still works very well electronically. No problems, there's zero decibels coming out. It's about 700 millivolts uh, sine wave. And uh, Kai, uh, are you getting any progress on your modern instrument? It's wonderful, it's a, it's a two button. It's, that's the beautiful thing nowadays. You press two buttons, auto set and quick view, and you already see a, a still beautiful working sine wave coming out of it. Yeah. And uh, the problem always with traditional oscilloscopes is that, you know, the signal is out of the image, yes. but this one seems to adjust automatically. Yes, it does. It does. It, it literally is an auto set button. All you do is you, you press auto set once and it automatically tries to find the best resolution for that image to show it. The same with the frequency. It, it shows like four or five periods of the sine wave yes, and not a, a band or whatever, you know, you, you, so you should have a usable image straight away. Yes, you have, you have. And you also get all the information about the frequency that you're using. It's a 3.09 3 kilohertz frequency that we okay. see. Let's change it for a bit, you know. See? Yes, you can see live. It all automatically changes, changes it here. And what happens with the, le what happens with the level as well? Yep, yeah. see? works so and it has lines like to show the, the top yes. of the bottom of the sine wave so you have an immediate in impression you have rise times 10 to 90 percent rise times you have about 14 13 to 14 live data on the display values, on the display immediately you don't need to do anything and the beauty is literally you switch the, pro the, the instrument on you press auto set quick view that's it that's it. it. It was never easier. <laughs> the, the, this is important as well because at the beginning when these autoset functions came up, 
a lot of traditional users didn't trust the auto set. I see. And this has changed nowadays. The they, total, they totally rely on it. Yes, they have understood that these systems work and they actually do the work for them. They don't have to worry about the proper setting of the instruments unless you have a specific situation. But you really cover a lot of percentage of your day-to-day -day work with auto set functions. So Kai, we've actually managed um, to link equipment differing about 55 years and absolute one cable, yes. no sweat, no problems. Yes. Auto setup is the norm today, yes. auto frequency, auto levels. So um, it still works. It still works. After all these years, Roden Schwartz build quality. Kai, I would like to thank you very much for this uh, interview on a part of Hamek. Thank you for being here. It was a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Okay, and, and we've been successful doing technical stuff as well as uh, exploring stuff and um, you know presenting the instruments uh, from Hamek the new ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Kai. Thank you for the interview. This was uh, Jan Buiting for Electro International Media reporting from Electronica 2014 for Hamek company with Kai Sharman.